daily life in Ostia was incredibly complex. This was an urban center. This was a metropolis. And people had different things they wanted to do on a daily basis, and they were getting them done by going to shops, stores, temples, other people's homes. And so what we see is a mode of social organization that's characterized by compartmentalization, specialization, industrialization. We have the minting of coins, in other words, money. A very complex mode of organization that lays the foundation for what we're going to consider later on to be modernity. Ostia is cosmopolitan. In the imperial period, foreigners are coming from all over the Mediterranean and they're coming here with their goods. They're coming here on their way to Rome. So you've got all kinds of religions represented here. You've got Jews, Christians, Eastern cults, and people are coming from these variety of backgrounds and intermingling, trading ideas, trading goods, and it's an overall very rich and cosmopolitan experience. Well, I mean, you're gonna have a wide variety of cultural sophistication within the city. I mean, obviously, some of the poorer citizens that are much less educated are gonna be living on a pretty basic level. Um, whereas, uh, you know, the, the, the wealthier people that are a little more intellectual, you know, they're going to be decking their houses out in, in a way to show this level of sophistication. Also doing, you know, learning different languages such as Greek, uh, learning to read and write is something very important as well. You're going to expect to see a lot of high quality marble imported from uh, different areas of the empire uh, to show a level of sophistication, good taste and style. Uh, you're also going to see some very well done frescoes, high quality artistry, uh, very, very well done, nice painting um, with a lot of different um, mythological motifs and iconography to you know, let, let the visitor of your house know what a learned person you are and how you care about these ancient traditions, Greek culture as well as Roman, um, to show a level of higher sophistication. You're also going to see a lot of mosaic work on the floors and sometimes on the walls and ceiling as well. Where do you live in the ancient world? If you've got a lot of money, you have a large house. If you have a little less money, you're living on the ground floor of an apartment structure. If you've got even less money, you're living higher and higher up in that multiple story dwelling. Or even if you can't afford an apartment, you're living in the space above your shop. And even if you have less money, you're living among the tombs and the necropolis outside the city. The necropolis, I mean, basically what it is is it's uh, the city of the dead is really what it breaks down to. I mean, it's outside the city walls because uh, in Roman times you Technically, you weren't allowed to bury anyone within the city limits. Obviously, there's people who break these rules, really important politicians, emperors and such. You see a lot of the little uh, columbadia, which basically is these little niches, and they then are the urns are put in there. So that's kind of like a mass cemetery. Whereas if you're a little bit more of a wealthy citizen, you're going to have a mausoleum built to yourself while you're still alive. So if you're walking down the necropolis here, you're going to see these little mini mausolea, and they're going to be talking like the inscriptions are going to be talking about, I'm a free man, I made money making bread, and look how much money I made, and I was able to build this tomb. Shrines are everywhere within the Roman city. So people venerate the gods in their houses, on the streets, in public places. All of this is seen as part of the social fabric, as part of what constitutes daily life. During the course of the day, you're selling your goods, or you're going off to a place like the Forum to buy and sell things. It's going to be going to the focal points of the city, the open piazzas, where various goods are being distributed and sold. Being in Ostia, it's very particular because a lot of your life depends upon what's coming in, what's being docked, what needs to be offloaded, what needs to be cataloged. So it's a very hectic scene in an industrious city of Imperial Ostia. So basically the economy in Ostia was largely based around the grain uh, that was coming into the city. And this is the grain that's feeding the empire. Fire is a big problem here at Ostia because of the, so much grain. Your fire protection and police protection were provided by a group of, of men called the Vigales. You need them to maintain the city. You need them to protect the grain because if the grain is destroyed, the grain that's stored in the warehouses, then Rome can starve. Think of all the things you do in daily life. They were really absorbed in those things as well. And lives got very complicated in the Roman Empire in a city like Ostia. So what you've got is dry cleaning for your clothes. You've got a grand selection of imports, food, but also uh, things that you get in, in stores, high-end luxury goods to the simple things. 
basically a big mishmash of things. I mean, if you walk down a city street today, you know, what do you see? You know, like, what are the stores that pop up? I mean, it's basically the same stuff you're going to see there, except for the fact that things are probably a lot more concentrated. You're going to have an area that's going to be just for buying meat. You're going to have an area just for buying vegetables. You're going to have an area, you know, just for buying and selling animals or slaves. And you're going to have areas where you're going to want to buy your furniture, your tapestries, and your household items. The Forum is more of a place for gathering and taking care of business. There's a basilica, there's the Senate, there's the Curia, there's the Capitoline Temple, there's the Temple of Augustus. So it's more of a, I guess, government and judicial area. People are arriving in Ostia via ship. And so one of the impressive things that they would see as they're coming along the Tiber River, right at the mouth where the Mediterranean is, you would see this impressive portico system. And then behind it, you'd see rising up this magnificent theater that would draw your attention. So you'd want to come in, you want to go through the shops that are in the porticos and make your way to the theater and hopefully there's some sort of production that's taking place. The audience was international. The people that are performing are international because that's the character of Ostia. Really in Ostia because it's a seaside resort that the focus is on water. You have the beach, but really you have the baths. Bathing is a big part of your life in a Roman city. Ostia had a focus on the baths because it's along the sea. So you can come to the, uh, the, the spa, the, the hot saunas, the dry saunas, the cool rooms. You're working out, you're in the gym, you're working up a sweat, you're wrestling, you're lifting weights, you're playing a ball game, but you're also socializing. You're also just you know, getting something to eat. You're hearing some music, you're hearing some entertainment, you're catching up on your gossip and the news. So there's so many things to do in the baths. It's an industrialized center. This is an organized civilization. So think about bringing all those goods. Well, large cities today, countries import goods from all over the world. They were doing that equivalent. And people had jobs. People had, came in with different backgrounds and languages and cultures and religions. All of it you would see in a city like Ostia. What we have is a modern urban layout, a mass distribution system, processes of industrialization, specialization of the labor force, the foundations of modern society are here in Ostia during the ancient period. 